Nothing's real but love. Nothing's real but love. No house, no money, no car. And be the love. Record numbers of families are now turning to food banks for help. I was really, really worried that we weren't going get to get any food and we was going to die. You could be rich at some point and then everything go downhill and then you might have to go to a food bank someday. It shouldn't be like this. People, all people should have food. As politicians continue to debate the reasons behind the rising food banks, we ask children experiencing food poverty to tell us what it feels like when the cupboards are bare. Things have been going off the path, flying off. And it's just snowballed into a big colossal wreck of horrible things. The cupboards are sometimes empty and we've been struggling a bit to get food and we've been struggling quite a lot actually. about food banks, breakfast club and kids not eating properly, but you don't know what it's like. Well, if you keep watching, we'll tell you. A report released by Oxfam has revealed that over 20 million free meals were provided last year to families like Rosie's. One, two, three. Rosie and her 13-year-old sister Becky live with their mum in Hull. It will be my birthday in uh, three months and four days. And I'm just glad I'm not a baby no more because I was one moody baby. I wasn't very happy at all. <laughs> a few months ago, we was running out of food and my mum had no money. There was like no cereals at all or any bread for toast and crumpets and cereals. So I couldn't, so I had to go to breakfast club. Children arriving at school hungry has become such a high-profile issue in the last few years that the National Association of Head Teachers has called on the government to give free breakfasts to all kids getting free school meals. The breakfast club I go to at church, I really like it there because you don't have to pay for your breakfast and um, there's lots of my friends that go there. The breakfast is real nice, there's enough to feed everyone and you can play games. <laughs> Since the recession began, over a thousand breakfast clubs have been started and some local authorities like Blackpool are now providing breakfast for all primary age children. The club Rosie attends in Hull is run by Youth for Christ. Your turn. If some mums can't feed their children, then they can send the children here for the morning. So that's really helpful? Yep, really helpful. Oh, well, if I got a one then, I would have won, but I got a two. That tastes nice. Mmm. Tastes like gingerbread. Oh, it's carrot bacon. It tastes, it tastes like ginger. It's got cinnamon in it, nutmeg, stuff like that, yeah? Nutmeg? That's nutmeg. Unemployment rates in Hull are amongst the highest in the country. Rosie's mum, Susan, has been unable to get a job and is relying on benefits to pay the bills. Sometimes struggling to uh, know where the next meal's coming from. Housing benefit covers part of the family's rent, but after paying the rest, Susan is left with around £90. After gas, electric, water and phone bills, she sometimes has as little as £25 to feed herself and the children for a week. It's been difficult. I mean, 
Sometimes mum has sold her own necklaces and family items. She can't get those things back. It's like selling memories. It's just not right. You tell him. There you go. Thank you. Good girl. The children need things. It's cold, it's winter, and on benefits, I can't afford to feed the kids and heat the house. Thanks, man, these comforts are gorge. More than half of all referrals to food banks last year were because families were struggling to manage on benefits. How am I supposed to make them stronger for the future if I'm not giving them the right vitamin content, the right uh, amount of milk, the right amount of red meat, the right amount of vegetables? When you have to buy cheap food, there's no taste, there's no enjoyment cooking it, there's no enjoyment eating it. Make set meals for set days and set amounts. You can't have any more milk tonight, girls, because that is all we've got. You can't have any more bread tonight because we need two slices for morning. Right, where are we going to put these then? Should we stand them up like that? You can't have Sunday dinner, we're going to have to have mash and mince, not vegetables, not all the good things, you know, the five a day, the healthy lifestyle that everybody in the government is banging on about. Can you see the armpits clearly? You look like a cucumber. <laughs> She's crazy, child, crazy. In May, 170 medical experts wrote an open letter in The Lancet condemning the rise in food poverty. They said that many families are not earning enough money to meet their most basic nutritional needs to maintain a healthy diet, and that the welfare system is increasingly failing to provide a robust last line of defense against hunger. Though the rise in food poverty predates the government's welfare reforms, those reforms have caused significant delays for some of those who suddenly find themselves dependent on benefits. Do you want your jacket? Naomi lives with her dad, Tom, and her brother, Dre, in Haverhill in Suffolk. Last September, Naomi was diagnosed with leukaemia. Her dad had a job as a gardener in nearby Newmarket, but he couldn't continue to work when Naomi was diagnosed. Ready? He loved his work. He loved doing it. And to think that he had to stop it because I was ill. I felt guilty for a while because I thought it was all my fault, but then I thought, well, you can't help being ill, so. Are they all the bank statements? Some of them. Because Tom has to look after Naomi, he can't apply for job seekers' allowance, so the family is getting by on around £220 a week in benefits. With extra costs like transport to hospital because of Naomi's cancer, Tom's been struggling. I owe my ex-boss a few quid. I speak to him, though, to let him know that eventually I will give him it back, just to assure him, but it makes me feel bad inside that I owe anyone money. Right, see you later. See you later. I owe Argos Retail Group, and I'm in arrears with my garage payments at the moment, and TV licence payments are all behind. I've got them letters come through the door. Do you remember trying to get that scooter up here? Yeah. It does worry you when you get letters saying that you could be taken to court and that they can repossess goods from your home. I could afford it at the time. Because I was working, I had a good job. Those letters that you've given me, you yeah. don't need to be worrying about that. Right. Okay. It was a bit of a concern, as they said, about court and collection it's a bit from threatening. your house. Yeah. Yeah, don't, a bit. don't worry. Um, if necessary, I can ring for you. And With food, how are things going on that? Yeah, it's sort of fairly difficult at the minute. When you don't know when it's coming and when it's not, you're a bit yeah, exactly. wary of spending what you haven't got. But As you know, food yeah. banks open every day. Okay. We can sit and write a voucher so that you know that when you come home, there's food there for you and Dre, and also for Naomi when yeah. she's home. Ooh. They've got shampoo, and what? The shoes. That's okay. You want to hang it on there? Yeah, with my... nice one. See you later. Cheers. Just one organisation that runs food banks, the Trussell Trust, has reported that it fed over 300,000 children last year. Most of the stuff is tin stuff, but at least it keeps and you can use it for different things to make different things with. They actually do give you a sheet of how to use your stuff. 
as well. It's like a, a day plan. Like Rosie in Hull, Naomi's brother Dre goes to breakfast club at school. So it's the weekends and school holidays that are particularly hard. I always have breakfast at school and I have free lunches. And then when, when I get home on Friday, the weekends, sometimes I can't like, have any food. Well, I can have little bits of food every now, every now and then where there's food here. But we have to, you know, bear with what we got. If it's on offer, when I have got some money, we'll have like a, a meat meal as a treat a week, like a bit of pork or a joint or something, and then try and cut that in half and freeze half of it and cook the other half another time. But yeah, I do find that is one of the things that you definitely struggle to buy on benefits, if you like. It's not very nice when you're hungry, because, you know, you just feel like eating and there's not much there. and. Yeah, it doesn't feel very nice. There's very little in the fridge. And some apples we've got down there that my mum brought round for us. <laughs> but as for fresh perishables, we can't do well in that respect. In the British Medical Journal, experts recently highlighted that the number of malnutrition cases in England has almost doubled in five years. They said, this has all the signs of a public health emergency that could go unrecognised until it's too late. Adding, malnutrition in children is particularly worrying because exposures during sensitive periods can have lifelong effects. skip a few hundred! But it's not just those on benefits who are struggling. According to the Trussell Trust, another major reason for families seeking food aid is low pay. Shall I help you, Casey? Two out of three children growing up below the poverty line live in families where at least one adult is working. My name is Cara and I'm from London and I'm nine years old. I used to live in Fulham, but now I live in Acton because um, I started staying with my nan. Cara's mum has been hospitalised with a long-term illness so she now lives with her nan, Lucy. Lucy used to work full-time as a cook, but looking after Cara means she's had to go to a zero-hours contract. So while some weeks you may have 30 hours work or more, other weeks you'll have none. As a result, money is very tight. There are people out there starving, not only like in Africa and places like that, but in where you're actually living now. And when you skip a meal, you kind of get like this sore feeling. Like, sometimes you just feel, ooh, like it's like a really bitey thing, like something's biting you. And it's like, oh, um, I wish there was something there to eat, but there's nothing there. So you just have to kind of like relax and like watch telly and just like try and calm down. And Because if you're like tense and if you're like a bit angry, it's going to get worse. It's not just people on benefit that are having it hard. I work and I could earn a fortune, but because of my circumstances with my granddaughter, I'm unable to do that. With our zero hours, as they call it, you, you don't know when you're going to be working and when you're not going to be working. She tries her best to get as much money as possible, but sometimes it's just not enough. So it must be really hard for her. Like, cause she has to go work her butt off, and she still does not have any really any money. So yeah, I don't understand like why the people do that do work don't have enough money, and the people that don't work do have money. It's just it's not all right. <clears throat> so now this is the actual mix for the saltfish fritters. With her new working contract making it impossible to budget from week to week, Lucy has spent the last of her food money on ingredients for Caribbean savouries to sell at a local market. It's a gamble to help make enough money to buy food for next week. She wake up at like six o'clock and start cooking all from scratch. And I wake up about seven to help her do the dumplings and the saltfish fritters. The last tin tomato. I have not, not a penny now, 
So whatever I make today, it's going to fill the cupboards, um, fill what I can buy, milk and things like that. Basically just keeping us going for the week. And off to market we're going to go. You can't just sit there and expect money to come to your door. You don't have like a tree in your back garden just growing money. So you have to take money very seriously. But if you're working, you don't have to depend on other people. Sometimes it's a bit of a struggle, but you get there. I've got to start selling now. Can we go rice and peas, jerk chicken? Eating or takeout? Do you like a little sample, madam? When the English used to go to the Caribbean, they used to bring all their salted cod, and then we took it and made it our own. Thank you. 30, 40, 50, 60. That extra 60 pounds that we made, I've got to put um, 30 pounds on the gas for the week. Then I've got to pay for Cara's Breakfast Club. So I am going to have to go down to the food bank. And I've just been told some very sad news that I won't be needed here because they're going to try and do their own food. Everybody's fighting for a little shop yeah, to try and make a living. Everyone's struggling the same as we are. I know. But we can cross our fingers. my bracelet box. Why? Because they're my bracelets and I don't want you touching them. What, that you never wear? I don't care if I don't wear them, it don't give you a right to touch them. Can I touch the box then? No, you can't, get off. Rosie. I ain't even touching it. I don't care, get off. I ain't touching it. I'm off. You hurting it? Rosie and Becky's mum, Susan, has recently been unable to find work. My mum was trained as a cook. She spent a lot of time around chefs and, you know, curry chefs and stuff like that, so she knows quite a lot about cooking and, yeah, she makes good food. You can make a lot of good food out of practically nothing sometimes, but yeah, I don't eat myself some days. I would just eat the children's leftovers. Struggling to make ends meet on benefits, Susan has resorted to desperate measures. They've got clothes, they can have shoes, they can have good food. I can take them out for a meal, we can have a takeaway if they want one. Susan has found a way of making more money through an adult website. She describes it as being a masseuse. And I'm self-employed. I claim tax credits, I don't claim benefits. And I do play national insurance <laughs> contributions. <laughs> but if you can be self-employed doing laundry, why well, can't you be self-employed doing whatever you need to do in order to feed your kids? That's how I look at it, anyway. There's lots of ladies out there doing it. I'm not ashamed, and I don't feel disgraced. I don't feel happy all the time when I'm doing it, but at the end of the day, why would I be... Why would I feel uh, dirty and horrible and nasty and not do what I do in order to give my children better things? That probably would happen in there. No! Look at... Water everywhere. Oh, good, it stinks. That's the drains. It's about sacrifices. Sacrificing myself any way possible in order to give the kids not just the things that they really need, but sometimes the things they want as well. Ah. I sometimes get worried because I feel like someone's really going to hurt my mum or something. And I always wonder if things are going to go really wrong and go really bad. I choose to offer my services for massage. So whatever goes in my room is, is my business. Nothing to do with anybody else. I don't care what anybody thinks because I feel in my heart of hearts, how can anybody ever look down the nose at me when all I'm doing is trying to support my children? I would rather she didn't do it, but there's no jobs here. Hull's just an economic pit. I mean, it's all, it's V-shaped. You just all sink into the bottom and until you can get a grip on the outsides and crawl out yourself. You've just got no hopes of getting out of it. I can't see anything getting better anytime soon. Oh, yeah. No, no, we just, the washing machine's just flooded. 
It's not the first time. It's a bit messy, the Christmas tree. In London, with Christmas coming, Cara's nan has also had a problem with a washing machine, an unexpected expense that has driven her to apply for a short-term loan. Oh, hi. Um, I came to you two weeks ago with regards to getting a loan. Oh, I can't cool. do that. That's 50 quid. I can't do that. Maybe. But then you guarantee I'll get it on the next day. But then that's going to leave me no money at all, so I hope it does go in the account at that time. In my kitchen, we have a washing machine that wrecks my clothes and a fridge that doesn't really work. It turns off, so then, like, it makes everything stink. And it's like, oh, no, like, there's no fresh food. It's all gone off. They've approved the loan, but I've got to pay £25 for commission and then £25 for me to get that loan in my bank account before Christmas. So that's £50 I've got to go and find to get a loan to be able to buy food and to replace this before Christmas. But now she's applied for credit, Lucy's phone number has found its way to dozens of loan companies. I went on a computer, applied to one company. One. 19 texts in one minute came to my phone. 19. Then even right through the night, they were texting me, you, you, you can have a thousand pounds available. You've got 1,500 we can give you today. And it's just like that, constantly, constantly. If they know you're clear for credit, they will just bombard you. And it's very tempting and you can get into great debt. The less you have, the more expensive it is to borrow. And by Christmas Day, Lucy has decided the price is too high. I had the £50, but I can't give it to them, you know, and do without gas and electricity and food, so I didn't accept the loan. Because I didn't get the loan, I said, it's not much of a Christmas this year, but we've got each other. We're family. Roof over our head, food to eat. What more do you want? You become so desperate that you just go and you take it. You sign any agreement, you don't even read it. Say you borrowed 500, you would have to pay them back 900. It's like you're never out of the circle, and that's what they do with poor people. Then they will come around and try and threaten you, and try and, you know, take your stuff. Oh, it's so ugly! It's, it's, oh, they're really nice. They're not real odd boots, they're just fake ones. I think the old books were about a fiver in peacocks. You don't have to feel ashamed or anything about it because there's lots of other kids like you. That's all you have to think. There's the same kids like me and you just got to feel good about yourself. You just got to say, I don't really care. Chili. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. In Suffolk, Naomi's dad has four pounds per person per day to feed his family. But that's before allowing for the cost of getting Naomi to and from hospital. People should really pick up that deal. Yeah, not round here. <laughs> the round trip to Cambridge is over 40 miles. Petrol and parking alone can cost 10 pounds per trip, before any other running costs for the car are included and sometimes Naomi has to go every day. Dad, mm -hmm. am I going just to pay to send a blood transfusion and a check-up? Yeah, I think so. Shouldn't be much more than that. The main worry for Dad is he needs money for the car because the tax and MOT is coming up soon. And if we don't have the tax for the car now, I've seen like, we've seen it in Haverhill, they clamp your car wheels and wheel your car away and that would be really bad if that happened to us because we need the car. Do you want to check through your bead collection again? Yeah. What's that one? 
tube replacement and removal. We haven't had the white one. What's the white one? Then? Chemo. Ah, she had plenty of them on there, yeah. <sighs> I couldn't take her on the bus because she was too ill and it takes too long. We tried their hospital transport out and they ended up taking us 14 miles out of our way before they took us home and she was very ill at the time. She's not very good in a car for more than about half an hour as it was and we was in there for a good hour and 20 minutes just driving around the countryside. I don't want her to have to go through all that again. What's that one? Oh, clinic visits. Oh, there should be a few of them. Sometimes I have to go to Addenbrooke's every day just to have antibiotics, but that's costing my dad a lot of petrol money. I don't want my dad to get depressed because he's going through a lot at the moment anyway. I'm just reading the letter I received this morning from um, Department of Work and Pensions, and they're saying that they cannot pay any disability living allowance from the 2nd of the 11th, 13 to the 18th of the second 14 because Naomi has been in hospital or somewhere else similar for more than 28 days altogether. We cannot pay disability allowance when you have been in hospital for that long unless you are a private patient. So that basically puts pay to anything that Naomi would receive, I think. We claim way back last year it's been like ages and it still hasn't come through and that's we're finding it quite hard because it's not just like it's money for me as well the decision to deny disability living allowance for Naomi took almost five months according to Oxfam a third of all those using food banks said delays in benefit payments meant they were struggling to feed their families hello there mate how are you doing? Hello, oh, Tom. Unable to meet basic bills and forced to choose whether to spend money on heating or eating, Tom's returned to the food bank and advice centre for help. How are things at the moment with gas, electric and that sort of thing? And It's sort of, I do heat the house a bit more with Naomi there. It's not so bad for me because I, I can be a bit of car, just put my jumper on and stuff, but I'll get one week where I can manage. So, well, I'll pay everything on one week because I'll get fortnightly paid yeah. benefits. Um, and then the next week, I'll be trying to struggle on a much smaller amount from child tax credit. And, and that's yeah. the week that hits you so hard. £130 child tax credit and child yeah. benefit, which doesn't cover the bills. Yeah. End up borrowing money off family and people. But then come the next week, you're in the same boat again because you've borrowed. And then when it comes to um, getting paid out, it just don't seem they make it easy for people. It is round and round in circles every time. I've had to phone them every time because they actually haven't paid it in when they should have done, even though my forms have been in on time. So that's been a challenge all the time. <laughs> Costing you more in phone bills. They're all 0845 numbers that cost you money. Everything's important and everything's so serious and you can just be fun and be free. No electricity. Anyway, the fridges are off. See, that's what happens anyway, this is broken. But it's, it's no electricity. I'm going to try and see if it'll give me a bit of emergency. Nope. I'm going to have to go and find some money to put in it. I'm just going to pop down and get some electricity. It's run out. Like Tom in Suffolk, Lucy is having to make choices between paying for light and heat and paying for food. Hi. Okay. She does run out of gas quite often. And this morning, we had to eat um, the beans that she cooked yesterday because there was no um, gas, even though she, top she went out at 6 o'clock in the morning just to top it up. I've got the electricity. There, I've put it in. 
Yeah, there. Now I've got um, 687 on there. That lasts two days. And then um, by tomorrow night, it's got to be topped up. Do we eat food or do we put money into the meter? This time of year in winter, I have to put in 35 in electricity, 40 in the gas. A week. That's just by using it, just to the minimum. You can set up a direct debit with them, which everyone does. It would be a lot cheaper, but I haven't got the amenities. I haven't got, you know, the finances to do that. The reasons for the rise in the number of people visiting food banks are highly contested, but increasing food and energy costs are widely accepted as key. Families like Cara's who get their energy on prepayment meters have to spend on average £110 more per year than those with direct debits. With her zero hours contract meaning work is still intermittent, Lucy has decided she has no choice but to go back to the food bank once again. I need a bit of help. Not all the time, because I have pride. I'm very, very, I've got a lot of pride, but I just had to admit defeat and say, wow, here I am. Never had to ask anybody for anything. And now I've got to say, look, I need a bit of help. Hello. The government's own research on food poverty found that Lucy's attitude is typical. The authors described going to a food bank as a strategy of last resort, when households have exhausted all other strategies, including cutting back and changing eating and shopping habits, juggling budgets, and turning to family and friends. A food bank is where, like, if you don't have enough money for food, you go there and see what they have. At first, it was a bit like, I don't want to be seen going to the food bank, and I don't want to tell my friends that I've been to the food bank. I was shocked that my life could ever get like that, shocked to the point where I'm going to have to ask somebody that I can't cope, I need to be tied over till my money comes through. Mm -hmm. So we're going to give you enough food to take away for up to 10 meals. Okay. Your second family. Thank you. Do you like things like kidney beans and chickpeas, lentils? Not lentils. No. Not lentils. No, I don't. Kidney beans and like Kid chickpeas. Yeah. yeah. Like this. Mm. Yeah, I was ashamed. But I'm not now. I'm proud. Because it's like a hurdle you get over. It's like, you've gone down, how do you get back up? Oh, the next two weeks, it's just going to be fantastic. Fantastic food with my cooking. Yes. I love it, being a chef. What sort of style of food do you like cooking? Uh, it's got to be traditional English and definitely Caribbean. Okay, um, <laughs> All right. I'll be right back. Thank you. Okay. A lot of people do actually go to food banks because even if your parents are working or anything, you still can't pay for your food. It's not very easy to tell your friends and family because they might think, oh, well, you, you must spend it on something else, but we don't. We just normally, we just spend it on gas and electric. No, no, no. <laughs> no. Slipping down. Oh, don't lose Diddy Kong or Albania. I love it how Donkey Kong is like a real hard gorilla and then you just get him sliding down slides. In Hull, although Susan has work, life is far from normal. She is increasingly turning to alcohol to numb herself to see her clients. Things have been going off the path, flying off. She used to be a lot cheerier than this and now she's just a little bit destroyed and that's not really what mums should be like, I guess. They need stuff, they need, they want things, you can't manage on the money you can get. You send them to breakfast club and go beg for bloody food, so I can't see my kids suffer like that. My mum drinks Lambrini because it's very, very cheap. One ninety nine for a bottle of Lambrini, I reckon. It's like you're selling your soul to the devil every day in order to put food on the table. The healthy lifestyle the government is banging on about eat five a day, you know, how the friggin' are you supposed to do that on the kind of money you get from the government as a single parent and all the pressure you get. What's your name again, honey? Sorry. Sam. Hi, Sam. Even though she only works when the girls are at school, Susan can earn £600 a week if she gets enough clients. How long would you like to stay? 
four times what she was getting on benefits. Of that, she now spends around £20 a week on wine. I don't think I'm a victim, and I don't want anybody's sympathy. But at the end of the day, if there's no work out there, I feel as a single mother, just wanting to be there for my kids and give them the things. You know when the ice cream van comes around and they say, oh, can I have an ice cream? And I was going, last year, I haven't got no money. You know, putting the pressure on them, that's unfair. It's not nice. I would change my mum, my mum's entire life. Well, not her entire life, just the bad things that go, go on in her life. And, like, change into good, like... I've heard in the news that many, many mums are doing it. The government can't help anything. None of your friends can help anything. None of her friends can help anything. It's just vicious. It opens your eyes a little bit, because she's having to do this just to put food on the table. I mean, come on, David Cameron, get your comb over straight. This shimmy just... It reflects the light from the... from the bloody spud bags under my eyes. I want to break the cycle. I want to make sure I have a decent future for myself and my own family. I want it to be a manga understudy for just some big manga company. Just be an understudy, help illustrate stuff. I've been drawing for as long as I can remember. It can be a release. I mean, you can draw your emotions on a sheet of paper. Sometimes you can't write them down, you can't speak them, but you can definitely draw them on paper. People can say what they want to say, but at the end of the day, she's still the woman that gave birth to me, and she's powerful, she's strong, and she's a good woman altogether. Get better than that girl. There's my designer box that I was going to make. And at the top there's a little sun, two clouds, a love art, and two butterflies. And it says Rosie's bread at the top. Oh no, I got pen on my new jeans. In Suffolk. The arrival of spring means that at least the weekly fuel bills are beginning to reduce. Things are looking up for Naomi in other ways as well. She's almost finished chemo and can soon return to a normal life. So you're looking forward to getting back to school? I'm quite nervous, like people staring. But I'll get there anyway. I'll have to get you some new school stuff out. I don't think they'll have you wearing what you want. Well, they'll have to till you can afford it. The other good news for the family is that after another month of phone calls, Naomi has finally been given disability living allowance, though the benefit hasn't been backdated. <laughs> Nearly ten pounds, come on, ten pounds an hour. Oh, so close. Nine pounds sixty-two. But even with the extra benefit, Tom still has to count every penny. They're all only a pound. He and Dre are looking for discounts on fresh produce that food banks can't provide. What have they got then? What's cheap? There's some chicken there for two pounds. We could make a curry with that. Yeah. That's not too bad price, is it? Yeah. What's that? Meatballs. <laughs> Do you like meatballs? Uh, They're never cheap. Tried. Look, one fifty-six. I've never tried meatballs. We'll try them. All right. Everybody needs help. Everybody. You just shouldn't be ashamed of it, really. Because the food bank's helpful, just like, when you haven't got enough money to go and get your shopping, it's just there. But, like, you ain't got enough money. That's it, put all the fridge stuff together. All right, fridge stuff together. Yeah. That's the right. I just want an end to it. I just want to start working and make and just be normal. I've never wanted to claim any of this in the first place, but there's, there's little you can do. That is £13.59. OK. Got one of them Coinstar vouchers um, yeah. for nine pounds sixty-two. Yep, that's down to three pound ninety-seven. Three ninety-seven. Yeah. It's going to be a change job. Fifty, sixty, seventy. There Thank you go. Very much. To the penny. <laughs> Thank you very much. Dad's on benefits because he can't get a job because he's looking after me. And 
That's not being lazy, it's about caring about me. You could be rich at some point and then everything go downhill and you might have to go to a food bank someday. My eyebrows are always starting to grow back. I'm yeah. anxious. <laughs> it feels funny. <laughs> I don't see myself going to university because it costs a lot of money. And I don't know if Dad could afford that. But if you want to get a good job, you have to go to like college or get the qualifications, but you have to pay for that. If you don't have the money, then it might affect your future if you want a good job. Bill. I cannot skim for biscuits. A little bank. Wow. In Hull, Susan has decided that for her children and her health, she must give up her current line of work. We had a long talk about what she was doing, and she did say that she was going to quit. She wants to work in a cafe again, cooking somewhere. She wants to be optimistic about her future, and that's what I've tried to encourage her to do. We've just lately had a lot of more closeness, me and my eldest daughter. She's aware of what happens, what's going on, and uh, she's a teenager and she understands. But I have told her I'm going to go back to work properly if I can get a job as a cook. I even do something car boating, anything. Get little flat ones, and then just go like that, like a frisbee. And I believe in her, so I guess she's going to quit. She better bloody quit. <laughs> so when you've been going to ADS, what have they said that you'll just hear in the yeah, next the couple of weeks? Yeah, the referral was done right at the beginning of December. When Susan has also committed to going teetotal and has applied for a place in hospital to detox. One of the staff from the breakfast club, Anna, is helping the family. Uh, once I go into detox and I'm back on the mend, you know, we're talking about long-term support with the mental health care team, you know, to make sure things are in place should I start to fall again. Not that I want to, I don't, you know. I feel happy for her because she's going to end up having a real new fresh life and like she's reborn or something. Reborn and turned her back to everything. You know your income's gonna... Plummet. Well, yeah, it's gonna be gone and you'll need to think about going on benefits pretty yeah. quick, which I know you don't wanna do and nobody wants to do that, but you know, that we can help you with food and things. You know, you're not gonna be left on your own, don't worry. Life is crap at the minute, but uh, you know, I'm working towards making it better. While she waits for her place in detox, Rosie's mum has also decided to give the family a fresh start by moving to a different part of Hull. Though before they go, they're helping build a community garden. I'm going to pop it in there, level with the ground next to it. When I saw the photos of the house, I thought it was like a lot better than this old one. Hopefully we'll have better life around us. A lot of new friends to help us get through it like all the problems that will probably be going on, like, because we will have problems sometimes. And that's all, really. Mum, Mum, can I hold the worm? You know what I used to do with worms when I was younger? What? Stick them in my mouth and swing them around. Ew, no. <laughs> I did, I did. I've heard my mum mention a few times we might be moving on Monday. So that's four days when we're moving. Four days till we're moving in, can't wait. It's a lovely day today, isn't it? Absolutely. As long as we move somewhere and as long as as long as we all stay together as a family. That's all I'm thinking of really. Jesus has called us to be his light and to spread his light. We are called to make a difference in the lives of our fellow men and women. I'm very, very lucky because I go to Mass and Cara, she does the altar serving and she sings in the choir. They know us, so they're always asking us, oh, are you okay, do you need anything? 
Our whole family has always had, our life belongs to God. And last year was the first time I questioned God. And I shouldn't have done that. By going to church, you get people helping you, talking to you, saying, if you do need any help, you know where to come. Because I've been going to church, I've got this sort of like a little bit of a backbone or a little bit of um, support other than my everyday life. I'm going to try my best when I'm older because I know that I've got dreams. I don't think it's going to be easy because you have to be the best of the rest. You have to achieve everything. You have to get A stars. You have to get, like, you have to be so good at everything. But hopefully, I'll get to university. <laughs> when I counted up my demons, saw there was one for every day. Ones on my shoulders I drove the other ones away The Work and Pensions Minister, Lord Freud, suggested last year that more people were taking food aid because more food banks had opened. But a report commissioned by the government has said they can find no evidence to support this. Oxfam said, in the seventh richest country in the world, no one should be going hungry and in need of a food bank. The charity also pointed out that a lack of official data collection means the true scale of food poverty will remain unknown. I want to be open so we can help mums out there that are going through the same thing and think that they're just in this one dark place where the doors only open inwards. I mean, we, I mean, we all need to reach out for someone when we've got problems and I think today is the day for that. While food and energy prices continue to lead inflation, and while both benefits and the earnings of the working poor lag behind, it's likely that more and more children will experience food poverty in the years ahead. It shouldn't be like this. All people should have food. Sometimes you just feel, my lord, like, what's happened to this country? I know you don't need money to be happy, but it still helps. The rich have problems, the poor have problems. The rich probably don't have as much problems because they have all that money.